week 10, Ooh. number one, Tennessee at Ooh. number three, Georgia, 230 on CBS. Georgia is currently an eight and a half point favorite there at Sanford Stadium, which I'm sure will be rocking for this game. But Ted, Josh Heupel has to be furious with the college football playoff committee. I mean, really? Really, you're going to rank us, not only are you going to rank us one, but you're going to put Georgia at three, and you're going to give Kirby Smart that ammunition before this game. He's got to be so pissed. Yeah. I. Uh, it's, it's so weird to me. I don't understand. I feel like all of these things are, like, purposeful. I don't know. Um, whatever. I like Tennessee's chances to go in there and beat Georgia. Uh, I'm picking them to go in there and beat Georgia. Uh, I, I, you know, if they play the game 10 times there, does Tennessee win the majority of those? Maybe not, probably not. But I think that they've got the momentum that they're building. What they're doing out there is so much fun. They've got so much energy behind them, fan base within that team, within that coaching staff. I, I think they just continue to ride that wave of momentum. And it's not like that's a, that's all you're taking. This is a legitimate offense. Number one offense in the country, right? I think uh, they've been right there. Uh, quarterback play has been excellent. His quarterback rating takes care of the football. They run it really well. Defensively, um, they don't get enough credit for what they've done on the defensive side. They're a pretty solid unit. They're physical. They tackle well. I'm taking Tennessee to win the game. Ooh, I like that. Now, I, I do think this game being in Athens, I mean, it changes things, but ten Tennessee has, they've certainly played in some big environments this year. There's no doubt, but you think of the biggest one they played in, it was, it was in Knoxville, right? Yep. At Neyland. So this is going to be, I mean, it's going to be the most hostile environment they played in all season long. Uh, that place is going to be breathing fire. This is what we were we we've been hoping for, man. Yep. That Tennessee offense with Hendon Hooker and, and all those weapons against this Georgia defense. And I know it's not Georgia's defense from last season, but it's still damn good. Now, Georgia, they did get some bad news defensively. Nolan Smith, who is an absolute dude for them, is going to be out the rest of the season. So clearly not playing in this football game. But maybe the number one question in this game for me is will Georgia Cover Jalen Hyatt, <laughs> or will <laughs> we find? Will he find himself wide open again for a couple more touchdown uh, touchdowns? I I think that they will cover him. So we'll see if Tennessee, if that wide receiver core can make some more competitive plays, uh, because I think the coverage is going to be a little more tight in this football game. I, I know that we're all excited about Hendon Hooker, but you're right, man. They it will be it will be a, a key for Georgia's defense to stop the run again because Tennessee does a really good job of spreading you out to run it. Mm -hmm. And if they, they can shut that down, then all of a sudden that this game becomes very, very interesting. I do think Georgia's going to be successful running the football with all that power run game that they've got. Uh, Stetson Bennett, can Tennessee make them uncomfortable? Will Stetson Bennett make some mistakes? He's been really good this year. He's been, uh, I mean, he has been about as reliable as you'll find in the country at, at the quarterback position. But if Tennessee can force someone else besides Brock Bowers to make some big plays at this game, they'll be in good shape. But I'm really hoping, I, I know some people tend to think it's going to be a little lower scoring. I hope it goes the complete opposite way. I hope it's a shootout for the ages and this game's played in the 40s or 50s, just like Alabama, Tennessee was played. And if it is played that style, I think that favors Tennessee. But I'm going to take Georgia to win the game at home. I would never lay the eight and a half, though. That's with how close I think these two teams are. I just I think that's entirely too many points. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I I hope it's a, a bit of a shootout, too, if, if Tennessee can kind of lure their, them into that type of uh, of game. And if they find some things, it's like as they start to hit you on some big plays, 
you know, it, it happens to defenses that aren't good, and it happens to defenses that are good. As things break down, everyone starts to try to do more than what they're supposed to, and it just falls apart on you. And uh, that's what Tennessee's going to be trying to do to them. Got to block them up up front, and if they can get that run game going. I think you, they can turn it into that type of game. Yeah, but it's the game of the year. And, you know, can't wait to watch that one on the old DVR. <laughs> that's going to be, yep. uh, that's going to be one hell of a football game. Okay. Next game, another SEC marquee matchup. Number six, Alabama heads to Baton Rouge to take on number 10 LSU. This game's going to be 6 PM central on ESPN. Bama currently a 13 and a half point road favorite. Hey, Ted, Brian Kelly. He he he's breaking out all the stops. He buttered up Nick Saban, wished him a happy birthday earlier in the week. But this is a night game in Death Valley that certainly gives LSU an advantage. Uh, Bama. Now they have played in some hostile environments, right? This season, let's make no mistake about that. They'll be as as comfortable as a team can be in that setting. But for me, it all comes down to what LSU gets from Jaden Daniels. These last couple games, as they've looked like a really improved football team, he's been awesome. And he's going to have to be phenomenal for them to win this football game. And I that puts a lot of pressure on him, though, man. Yeah, it does. I I think LSU is one, and I know they're, they're ranked number 10. Which was they, shocking. I know. But they are one of the least talked about teams in the country with how good they're playing right now it is a solid, super talented football team. Um, I'll take Alabama to win, but I'll take LSU to cover. And yeah. I think they got a, they, it would not shock me at all. If LSU wins this football game, Alabama just, they have not been what we've expected them to be this year. We keep saying, oh, well, they're, you know, they're going to get it together at some point. If they have, they win an extremely tight game. If they haven't gotten it together, they lose. I mean, that's just, that's how LSU is right now. And like you said, that place, that's, it's going to be an insane atmosphere like it always is at night. Um, Alabama better get ready. They're, they better get ready. They're not, LSU's not going to be scared. And they're going to fight them tooth and nail. I think it's going to be an incredibly tight football game. Yeah, and I am – I'm curious to see how LSU can run the football against Alabama. When you think about the strengths and weaknesses of that defense, I think that, you know, stopping the run has not been a strength of theirs. And with what Jaden Daniels can do with his legs, but that adds a very difficult element to the run game for Alabama to defend. But ultimately – the question for me is, when you look at LSU's offense, are they capable of stressing Bama's defense the way that Tennessee did? They certainly, they got the wide receivers, man. I mean, they got, they got some dudes at wide receiver. But can Jaden Daniels make the throws? Uh, can they protect him with all those guys coming off the edge for Bama? If they can, LSU certainly has the tools to have a big day offensively, but I, I just, I wonder how they're going to approach this game. Are they looking at it going, Hey, let's keep it on the ground. Let's bleed some clock. Or they said, Hey, let's spread them out. Let's try to do what Tennessee did to them and, and see if we can do it at that high of a level. But certainly the same components are there, right? Mobile quarterback. That's really talented, uh, incredibly talented wide receiver core. Uh, maybe it comes down to, how the offensive line plays for for LSU, but I for for some weird reason, like I'm more intrigued by this game than I am by Georgia Tennessee. I don't know, it's strange. Yeah. yeah, because there's there's some unknown there with LSU. It's like, do we believe in this? Are they they as good as they've looked here recently? And you know, I all defenses that are as good as what Alabama has been, as good as what Georgia has been whenever you throw a quarterback that can run around into the mix, it can really screw things up. And uh, Daniels can be that guy. And as soon as you start to 
to loosen the defense up by running it around with your quarterback, scrambling, making some plays. That's whenever the running game starts to happen. The last thing any defense wants to do is chase a quarterback around for 10 seconds of play. It's miserable. So I I don't know. We'll see. I uh, I think it's definitely an LSU cover, in my opinion. Could be wrong, uh, and it wouldn't shock me if they won it. Uh, I will say Bryce Young, couple weeks, get a little healthier. Would not be surprised if he looks amazing in this game. And well, it's time. It, it, you know, it's week ten. I, if Bama's going to beat Bama, I, like they were picked before the season, it's time to start showing up. Yeah, and Jameer Gibbs, Woo. maybe he's he's top five for me when it comes to fun players to watch in college football. Like that dude is electric. So if if Bryce Young comes out there slinging it and Jameer Gibbs is doing his thing and he's finding some space against that LSU defense, maybe uh maybe Bama rolls, but that that is a massive spread for the circumstances, you know, Death Valley at night. That place yeah. is gonna be insane. So yeah, I'd I'd take the points and feel fine about that, but I'm pumped for that football game. Who who would you take? Uh, Jameer Gibbs or Bijan Robinson? That's tough because Gibbs appears to catch the ball really, really well out of the backfield. And I he he looks bigger and more physical too, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think you can go wrong with both. And maybe I'm being, maybe I'm kind of leaning into the SEC bias a little bit. I think I might take Gibbs. I I would, but I don't know. They're, I want to pass pro. Yeah, I want a pass pro highlight reel of both, and that's how I'll make my decision. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't exist. Yeah. All right. Last game we're going to talk about somehow, some way. Number twenty four, Texas. I. 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 What? Let's not even spend time on it. Who cares? Is go is traveling to number thirteen Kansas State. This game will be six p.m. on FS1. Somehow, some way, Texas is a two and a half point favorite in Manhattan. Ted, you look at this line, and I know it's not all about betting lines. I feel like they're begging everyone under the sun to take Kansas State because you go, you see it, and you go, "Do I trust Texas to go play well?" in Manhattan, Kansas, against a very solid Kansas State team. Of course I do. I, I don't. Of course I don't trust Texas to go and do that. But here we are. Texas is somehow in the top 25 and somehow favored on the road against Kansas State, who's looked. No, I mean, they just beat the absolute hell out of Oklahoma State. So make it make sense, man. Help. Help me. I thought it was dumb when Texas was a road favorite against Oklahoma State. Turns out it was. I think it's dumb that they're even even more ridiculous that they're a road favorite against Kansas State. Um, you know, one of the things going into that Stillwater game is it was Quinn Ewer's first true road game as a starting quarterback. Big environment. He was awful. This situation is going to be just as bad maybe even louder and more intense of an environment at Kansas State and Kansas State is a smarter more physical more disciplined better all-around football team than Oklahoma State is all right so how Texas is favored I have no idea I would be shocked frankly if they went and beat Kansas State I I'm with you now you're gonna love this guess who had a one-on-one -on -one 16 minute interview with Will Howard this week <laughs> wow well how'd that go it it went great I buttered him up before I told him that I've been telling him what telling everyone he should move to tight end <laughs> I told him though we addressed it but yeah it, it was inter it, it was really interesting to hear him talk about how getting thrown in the fire his first two years and his struggles in a weird way had prepared him and helped him for the moment. 
and for the opportunity he's got right now. It was it was actually it was really cool to hear yeah. his outlook and kind of him talk about that experience. I'll tell you right now, that's a confident guy. Confident guy that's got the support of his teammates. And I I don't know exactly how Chris Kleiman, who I also talked to this week, I I straight up asked him, Hey, who are you starting at quarterback? He said, Gabe, yeah, you know I can't tell you that. Come on. <laughs> Which I was like, I know you can't, but I gotta ask. So I don't know exactly how they're going to handle that situation. If Martinez is healthier, I, I think you got to roll with Will Howard with how he's opened up the passing game. But man, I, I, I just don't trust Quinn Ewers. I don't, I, I don't trust Quinn Ewers against that defense for Kansas state, who is rock solid, who is an underappreciated defense in college football. With what I've seen from him in the last two games, throwing the football, and we can talk about wind and all that. I, he's been bad, man. And Kansas State isn't exactly a defense that you get right against. So I know they've had two weeks to prepare, but I just, I'm taking Kansas State at home, especially if you're giving me points. Are you kidding me? Like, I just, I do not understand why people still trust Texas. I know that they've gotten up big in games. Maybe that's it. Like they've had some really impressive losses where they were up big. I Maybe that is it. But I, I think Kansas State's going to control this football game. I don't know what I'm missing. I've, you know, I've seen both teams play. Both teams play quite a bit. I've seen them up close and personal. I I see no no metric, no side of the ball. Like, tell me where Texas is better than Kansas State. I Texas has a good running game, and Bijan Robinson is going to make some plays. You know, I'm fine with that. I get it, um, but. I, I really like Kansas State's defensive line and linebackers. Um, Quinn Ewers in the passing game, like they've got some good uh, wide receivers. There's no doubt about it. He's coming off of his worst performance. He's going on the road again against a defense that is uh, way better than what Oklahoma State is. I just, I, I don't see it. Offensively, with for Kansas State, Deuce Vaughn, I expect him to have a huge day. Special teams, I, I gave Kansas State the win on special teams uh, for this game in the preseason. I, it, they're going to win special teams. They'll probably have a couple of explosive plays in special teams somehow. I don't see it. Now, if Texas shows up and you get I, the best of everything that they have to offer offensively, defensively, they don't make any mistakes. Like all of their players make great plays and you you get you squeeze every ounce out of their roster. Yeah, they should win this game. But that doesn't happen. It has the only time it's happened for them this year has been whenever Oklahoma didn't have their quarterback on the field. All right? That's the only time it's happened. So I it's Kansas State, and I don't even have to think about it for a second. I, I will say Sark with two weeks in the lab to dial some things up. Like they're gonna, they're gonna have some good concepts. He's got a great offense. Sark yes. has designed a, an excellent offense. There's no but, doubt. But I have my doubts, like some serious doubts about Quinn Ewers. I, I really do, and I don't know why I'm the only one talking about it. I, I mean, he was really bad against Iowa State, and he was even worse against Oklahoma State. So I. I don't know, but if he doesn't play well, Kansas State's going to roll him, man. I mean, absolutely roll him. Now, I will say, Deuce Vaughn, B. John Robinson, you talk about a running back matchup that's as good as you're going to find in college football. That's going to be fun. Both of those guys are going to have huge impacts on this game. I, I feel like I know what I'm getting from Kansas State. And I don't know, like it's a mystery what I'm going to get from Texas. In Manhattan, that place is going to be nuts. I, 
I just don't get it. Give me Kansas State. I, I just can't. Like, Texas, I am more than happy for them to prove me wrong. But I can't say, you know what? I trust that football team to go beat a really solid team on their own field. I just, no way. There's no way. I don't I don't think so either. And maybe, you know, maybe this is like we're all going to feel really dumb after this. Kansas State, as as solid as they typically are, has been prone to like weird one-off, like where the hell did that come from, poor performances. It's been a while since we've seen one of those, but they have had them. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I don't see it. I, if we get, if we get Will Howard from last year and the year before that, well, Texas could win. Texas State could go in uh, <laughs> against that Will Howard. But if we get the Will Howard that we've seen the last two weeks, Texas not only loses the game but loses handily. Yeah. We'll see, man. It's a it's a very interesting game when it comes to how the Big Twelve could end up shaking out. All right, let's.